The Corn Thicket Podcast with Kyle and Howie, presented by Realtree. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was it was surreal. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it, but the story with this deer, you know, it's not three years of history. You know, like some guys, you know, might right. have a story, but I mean, right. it was, it was a trip July, you know, just right. the whole thing. Well, <clears throat> welcome back to the corn thicket. I'm Howie. Uh, it is rut in Missouri. So Kyle is, uh, currently in a tree somewhere. It's still daylight, especially out there. So, um, lucky enough to be joined here by my good friend, Craig, who got biggie this year. The, the Bucky named Biggie. So you might as well pull that right up into the camera here now and get yeah. this, just get this underway. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, hell yeah, dude. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to talk about them and whatever, whatever else we might get into. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But. So let's dive right into it, man. So this was last Saturday. I got to tell yeah, you real quick. Today. So I don't know if you saw it on, on Twitter or not. I don't know how active you are on there, but I got sent, I have like 15 pictures of this buck that have been sent to me. And just right out of the gate, let's say Pennsylvania, public land buck, right? He's running state game lands. All these hunters just say they don't have, there's no deer in Pennsylvania. There's nowhere to hunt in Pennsylvania, this and that. It's like, well, you're, you're lazy. We'll get into that too. But um, uh, I probably have 13 or 15 pictures of this buck, including one that got sent to me. So a buddy of mine killed his buck last Thursday. And I know he was sniffing around this thing too. Mm-hmm. experienced some of the kind of same things you were seeing, like, uh, you know, he'd disappear, show up in the middle of the night, shift over, like just kept dodging a little bit, right? Probably because he had 15 guys after him, but, um, and girls, because I know Megan was after him too. And, uh, and he said to me, he said, he, he took a buck he wasn't super happy with. And he's, he's one of those guys just gets a giant. It's Doug, you know, you know, mm-hmm. Doug, right? He, he gets a, really good buck every year and he wasn't happy with the buck he took i was like well i got a 14 year old he'd be happy to go with you and you yeah. know change that and uh he said oh maybe i'll, I'll try to get him out next week because he was busy saturday and then he sends me that picture mm-hmm. on friday of this guy daylight in 618 i was 200 yards below him on a on a bench yeah yeah so 618 that's a picture i put that picture because okay so here's the other part so Doug can't go out, but uh, Lee scheduled – my wife Lee scheduled dinner for us at 6 o'clock on oh, Saturday. So that's what the – November 4th. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's funny you don't know this, but um, – so Doug played a role in this deer a little bit. You know, he was very helpful. And yeah, yeah, yeah. My – All right, so technical – bullshit out of the way i just got here yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> oh man we had already covered like a lot of shit now well, i don't know if we can you reach back and grab the stuff or yeah i mean i might be able to well we it was summarize a, again shout just out for, doug doug was a big doug. part on this deer yeah yeah and like i said doug's a great guy you know willing to take my boy out teach him what he knows but <sighs> Yeah, man. A lot of guys and girls are chasing this buck, so let's get into the story. You found him in July, right? Yeah. Now, it, is this an area you normally hunt? So not really. You know, I started guiding I started guiding whitetail hunts, like, back in 2020. I, I got out of the Navy, moved back from Cali, All right? ran a lodge in Pike County, Illinois. Right came home kind of had the resources you know small business stuff veteran stuff and yeah uh started 2d out there so long story short my last couple years has been all other people right so i've been going out and finding farms that i'm either leasing or at least have access to that's low pressure for my clients right and i haven't had time like i snuck out to illinois two years ago for four days and killed one right and that was like it before all that I was all over the Midwest, big leases, Adams County, Ohio, right. every chance I could chasing whitetails all the way up until, you know, I, I joined and got out. And so anyway, the, this, this season, the 2023 season, cause I bought a new business. Yeah. I took the year off of outfitting and gotten. Right. 
So this back in like June, I was like, wait a second. Yeah. I was like, I have my whole season just for myself. So like I can right. find a big one in PA. I got my lease in Ohio lined up and leaving, leaving on Thursday yeah. for Ohio, by the way. Right. The second cold front's hitting Friday morning. You said Adams County? No, we're, we're hunting Knox County. Okay. I used to have leases in Adams. We're going to Knox County. The second cold front hits this Friday. Yeah. So today's the 7th. So right, the, right. the ninth it's hitting, I think this is going to really, really good timing. So bought a new house last year, and there's some significant game lands within two miles of where I'm living. Right. And I said, man, I'm going to go back there and run some inventory cameras. All right. And uh, just SIM card, muddy trail cams. You go pop the card on them. Right. And uh, right. the first time I went and checked it in July, I'm roping my buddy Ben in. Yeah. I'm like, come on, man, let's go for a hike. I got, you know, 15 cameras out or whatever. Let's go right. see. He's like, man, there ain't nothing on game lands. You're wasting your time. He just put <laughs> in a food plot on a private farm. He was all right. excited. Right. He's like, just hunt that with me. And I'm like, now nah, let's go look. Well, we got to this field, and I had a camera on the left side and a camera on the right side. Well, he went to the left side. I went to the right side. I checked my camera, not much. I walked over to him. I said, anything on that one? He goes, just 165-inch 10-point. I'm like, yeah. I flipped the screen around. There's a 165 inch ten point in, yeah. in velvet in July, yeah. eating apples. And and just like Ben Wood, he's within three inches. <laughs> yeah. He's under three inches off uh, on that in velvet. Dude, I got a I got a funny story about that too. But um, but yeah, I found him, found him in July, and um, never in a million years thought he would stay as long as he did. Right, right, right. And like we got up to like. September 16th, and I got a picture of him when he lost his velvet. And I was like, all right. We, now, did he shift when he lost his velvet? Not at all. Dude, that's wild. You know, these big deer. Well, that's true. He's a little bit older. <laughs> yes, yes, but also each each one of these deer kind of has their own little special personality and trait to them. Yeah. And you hear, like, people are now using the word roamers and things like yeah. that. And, yeah. and I think people have known this forever, but guys are now starting to say it on podcasts and stuff. Like, right. well, right. that deer had a roamer personality. And there's a lot of people going, well, back in 2012, that big buck, that much, you know, I guess he had that personality too. But what you what you find is this deer was not that roamer personality. Yeah. As as far as I knew him, and the other people hunting him, like I don't know that part. So, right. but like the way that I knew this deer was, he had a schedule and he stuck to it, and he liked it. Yeah. So he did that all summer. I mean, I think he had two or three beds. I found one of them. I jumped right. him out of a bed in right. August. Right. I was like, "You gotta be shitting me." Yeah, and he's gone. You gotta be thinking he's gone. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, but. and. uh he lost the velvet and he stayed. And then seven days after he lost his velvet, he was still there, still doing the same thing. Day lightning in September, hard horned. And it gets to be like the 27th or 28th. And, and Ben was, the plan was Ben and I were going to hunt him together right. until right. one of us killed him. Right. So we had a plan and uh, we knew his bed because when we jumped him, we left a cell camera. And yeah. two days after we jumped him there, you literally have pictures of him in his bed. Oh, wow. And we'll uh, have to add that to the podcast. We'll throw it right on there. He yeah, started. Some of this. He started every single day, in and out, in and out. I mean, it was like this guy's actually like, yeah, one of the most patternable bucks ever. Yeah. So and, you, uh, you mentioned jumping them, though. I think that's interesting. I've, I've had, again, I'm, I haven't killed the quality of bucks that Doug has, that that you have, obviously, um, and that Ben has. Um, but you mentioned like the roamer personality. I've noticed even jumping a buck, a couple things. Like I haven't had a buck that I truly surprised, like a good buck that I truly surprised that stayed around. But I feel like I've had, I know that I've had larger buck who, larger bucks that like you, you bump them, but they're okay with where they were because they saw you coming and they got out safe. You know what I'm saying? Like they kind of slipped away and they feel like this is still a good spot because I saw him. That's what I'm thinking they're thinking, right? Like I saw him coming. I got like the fact he came back to that bed. He has to feel like, yeah, someone came through here, but I saw him coming. I got away fine. I'm going back to it, right? I, I've had him do both things, but I feel like more often than not, like, and this comes down to like when I'm scouting in like late summer, 
I don't, and maybe this is completely wrong. Maybe do it totally different. I don't know. But I don't make it a point to be super quiet because I feel like if I, if I jump it, if I surprise it, it's going to be more likely to be like, well, that's, that's not okay. Right. But if it hears me coming and it can slip off, I'm not going to see him, but I'll see the sign. And I'm like, okay, there's a good buck in here. You know, so I don't go banging pots and pans or anything like that, but I just kind of, just kind of walk, you know, in the, in the summer, but it sounds like this guy was going to come back no matter what. Yeah. And then at the same time, I hunted a 230 inch typical in Pike County in 2020. Yeah. When he got killed, my neighbor killed, the neighbor of the farm he was on killed him. He killed him on October 18th. The first big cold front that blew through the tri-state area in 2020, five 200-inch deer got killed in a two-day stretch, 18th and 19th of October. Yeah. In the tri-state area, like Missouri wow. had a giant. And then this buck I called Tombstone, he's a bed in an old cemetery. Right. At the time before his drying process started, he had a 60-day drying period for Boone and Crockett scoring. He right. was 230 typical. He was going to be number five in the world ever. I don't know where he ended up. Right, right. But anyway, when I saw that my buck tombstone got killed, I called the outfitter that killed him. He invited me to his lodge. I got there. He said, I have newspapers calling me, interviews, hundreds, clients trying to book. Right, right, right. He goes, sure. you're the only guy I've called back. He goes, you want to know why? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> What's, what, you know? And he goes, uh, tombstones. He said, you're, you're calling this deer tombstone. He's like, I didn't name him. He goes, right. he's eight years old. We've missed him twice. I have every shed of his since he was a year, year, year and a half old. He said, this is the first year he didn't summer on me. I want to know where he was, and then I'm going to tell you why I think he, he wasn't on me. So how it all shook out was Tombstone moved about three-quarters of a mile across an open cow pasture from where that deer historically lived. Right. And the only reason that he, that he could figure he did this was he went in and did some hinge cutting in July in, his, in where he believed this deer's core area was. And he was trying to make it better for him. He, he was, was trying, trying to, to change some travel pattern stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. so right. so they they would kill him that year. Right. And that deer disappeared in July. Didn't come back till October. So perfect example of these deer's personalities. Like yeah. I jumped Biggie out of his bed, and he came right back the next night. That deer in Illinois got jumped in July and didn't come back for months for the first time in his life. Right. So it could right. go either way, and right. I, yeah. there's not a solid answer for it, and you shouldn't right. talk in absolutes anyway. Right, right, okay. exactly. But I think like, that's what we're all driving at here is exactly that. Some so. deer, you jump them, and he's gone for three months. Some deer, he comes back the next day. Yeah. The goal should be not to jump them. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> but if right, you right. do, and if you right. track these deer, you might find that it's, uh, it could go either way at any time, you know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Kind, of tough to hard to find, or kind of tough to find their core area, in a new area especially kind of bumbling around a little bit obviously you use topo maps and and yeah. you know all that stuff but you know you see that brushy that brushy ravine you're like oh he made I'm it easy look at it you know he made it easy because what he was doing was he was coming to a real social apple tree and he'd go up there and he would like it was funny because i'll have like 15 pictures of him in a night and he'll just do laps he's just doing laps around the apple tree with his yeah. nose down yeah. i don't know if he was looking for a fallen apple right. we were just joking about this last night it's like uh well when you're a big buck and you're stubborn you don't go to the apple tree till midnight <laughs> right. there's not gonna be any apples yeah, left yeah, on the yeah. ground right you know right. so you either come early get you an apple or you stand at the bottom looking up and going man i hope <laughs> the wind blows you know but but he would just do loops around this tree and yeah. uh but he did it every night and he made it easy because I started moving cameras back. I started getting them in the timber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, it was like looking at topo. Like there's two right. benches down there. One's right. a little bit, one's a little bit flatter. Has a little right. bit more cover on it. He right. might be there. And then I got antsy and I said, I need, I, I want to look down. I, I want to go down there and I want to look at it, at the right. bench. I think he's on. Right. And he was there. That's that's when you <laughs> jumped. Like, oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, you should have just, you should have just. It looks good. You know he's here. That should be good right. enough. But right, I, right. I, you know, I got, I got pray, jumped yeah. him. Luckily, he came back. So yeah. Yeah. that probably was, that was probably early September. He was actually he was hard horn, and that was the first time I realized he was chocolate rack. Yeah, right. because he ran away from me. You know, you take them yeah. IR pictures. You don't see colors. Just all white right, bone. Right, right. He ran. Right. He ran away from me off that bench. I saw this and I went his rack is like super Brown. dark yeah yeah so it must have been mid-september when i jumped him right right but 
Yeah, so like I said, just in the days before you – so did, I'll, I'll just say this quickly and we'll go back to the beginning of the season and the rest of the pursuit of him. But just in the days before you shot him, I told you about other friends of mine that had been seeing him and they just called him, you know, the hammer, like, you know, this big 10, you know, the giant 10, whatever. <laughs> and uh, the one had him at like 1025 in the morning, this wow. on a doe. Do you within, know the day? Within 25 yards. It would have been, I want to say Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Makes and, sense because he was gone. Yeah. And he was on this doe at like 1035 in the morning Man. and just went and, and they're – you know everything they can of course he's on dough he's not stopping you know he was he was just just running her and full draw inside 25 yards and just could not get him to stop and you know it's nuts and um i've been on both sides of this thing now yeah you know i had a i had a probably 180 inch eight point right right as as big as a as an eight point can possibly get (laughs) Right, right. You know, I'm saying 180. If he was right. in the 70s, it doesn't really change. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. One came out of Emlinton a couple of years ago in that yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. It was like a 168, yeah. eight point or something. Right, right. But I had this giant at uh, 65 yards where Ben was above me. Right. Filming with a range yeah. finder. And what I didn't know at the time was he was shooting range on the deer for me. And I, I was locked in and ready to go. Right. And I didn't know it, but Ben was shooting – he, there was a limb covering the deer, so he was shooting in front of the deer. Oh, right, right, right. Well, he, he was pro, he was saying that deer was probably 50. Ben was saying 65. I probably would have shot open bean field 50 right, yards. But right, right, That deer got killed. And so I, now I've been on both sides of it. It's like, yeah. you know, this guy has him at 25 yards, can't get the shot. And then I'm sure, you know, he hears I killed him and he's just devastated. Well, I've been that dude, you know. Actually, it was a she. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, awesome. She's like, so glad somebody got him. Like you were saying about somebody with a bow. That's she, cool. Like I sent her pictures. I was like, hey, you know, look, look at this. And she's like, oh my God, that's great. Can I, can I save those down? Can I show my dad? Like, you know, stuff like that. Or, you know, she took him and showed her dad. Well, so yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't devastation, which is crazy to me. Cause I, I've been on the other side of that too, right? Where I was chasing. I mean, I got one up in New Bethlehem that I'll show you pictures of here in a little bit while we're still chatting, but just, just stupid stupid big he ended up getting poached because mm-hmm. everything in new Bethlehem gets poached was that this year no this is about seven seven eight years ago dude a guy but, walked into my winery up there in in august and yeah. had a picture of a double top double drop time that got poached i said in august these guys are shooting yeah. them in august oh now? yeah mudlick road up there mudlick road i know yeah we, we did a well up there but yeah 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 and anything along that it's gonna die so here's uh Jeez. i'll show this to the camera here first this guy, this is in, this is in, uh, good night. Yeah. Yeah. He's 14, eight and six. And that guy, you take a look at that son of a bitch. That was on July 30th. Man, he's got an inner kicker. That's unique. Yeah, he's, he's, he's Usually crazy. Usually them big. kickers go out. And yeah. I follow, I followed him and waited until he popped. Cause I knew he was going to pop. Now, to be honest, I was going to kill him the year before too, but, uh, it got started getting late, and I honestly started thinking later in the season, I was seeing him in, in late archery, and I knew nobody up there muzzle that hunted. And I made the decision the year before that picture to say, I'm not going to kill him. He was a good buck. He was a, he was a 145, 150 buck every bit. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to let him go because he's going to live. It's like tough. I knew then I was like, he's going to live. And I've seen him. He's I've seen him since he's been a year and a half. Like he's just going to get bigger. I knew he was only four and a half and he was five and a half in that. And I'll show you some other pictures later, but there's a, there's like a good 10 point, a little like 130 inch 10 point, not little, but like 130 inch 10 point stand there feeding. And when this, this is the first picture I got of him in the summer, he walks up next to him. And it's like a different animal. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. this is a two-and-a-half-year-old buck, and this five-and-a-half-year-old buck, the body, it looks like a completely different species mm-hmm. standing next to it. And that buck, I'm sitting on this, just real quick, we'll get back to yours. We're sitting on this, like, L-shaped field. I got tram roads that come up over the top, right across from Dead Man's Hill. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. We were right up across from that. Yeah. And, uh, and I see him working the field, working the red, red brush field. And... I ground at him a couple of times. He doesn't want anything to do with it. He's, I'd seen a doe go through there like 15 minutes later. So I'm watching this spot and I see him come out. I'm like, Oh my God, it's noon. 
you know, like mm-hmm. November 10th. So I hop down out of the stand, go running out around the L, and we've got the the, the access road. The well road comes in, and there's this big turnaround. That's pretty bold. So I start – well, I'm still in the woods, right? And I <laughs> pop out this end, and I see him going. That's what you call getting aggressive. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I've been, I, there he is. It's November, right? I know he's, I know he's on something. So I start grunting at him like – I mean, just like rah, 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 just as aggressive as I possibly could. And he turns, and he's, he bristles. And he's 200 some yards away, but I can see his, like, you can see the back of his, his back got darker, you know, like against mm-hmm. the sun. Oh, yeah. And even at 200 yards, I could tell he was hot. He comes on a run. I mean, he's on a dead run. He stopped one time and took a small pine tree and just destroyed it. He hooked it, turned his antlers into it, and <laughs> lifted straight up. And pine bows just, just went like, it looked like, like LeBron at the beginning of the game when he <laughs> saw this stuff up, right? That's crazy. So he's coming and, uh, and this is all just red brush. We had had nothing but red brush in through there. And he comes up. I've got nothing but the tra- the the well road, and then this turnaround. And I'm 18 yards from from the edge of that red brush. I'd already ranged it. And I'm figuring he's gonna come right up on the road. Like he's just gonna come right up on the road. He comes up. He's literally a foot and a half to two feet into that red brush. And I can see him. He's not like down in it. It's not high enough now. It's November, so it's falling down. And I'm like, you're, you're so dead. I'm already at full draw, you know, and I've only been holding for 10 seconds, right? I saw, I saw his rack coming. So I, I draw, I'm not, I'm not holding long or anything, you know, I'm at this time I was shooting every single day. So like you said, anything, I, I killed it though earlier that year, like 65 yards mm-hmm. just cause I could right? this 20 yard chip shot. And I, I pick the spot. I'm like, don't look at his rack. I pick the spot. He takes a couple more steps and he stops and he's looking around and I let fly. And I watch that arrow go, and it just goes, thunk, and it stops. I don't mean it, def- it didn't deflect. It didn't shoot up. It didn't shoot down. It just stopped. And earlier that summer, we had, like, along this road, we had, like, five saplings along, like, a 100-yard stretch that were leaning in. And we had just come along with nippers. And instead of cutting them low, I just was being lazy and cut them, like, waist high, just nipping them off, whatever. Dead, not centered one. The arrow literally stopped less than two feet from this deer. Mm. And I'm looking at it like, like I see the deer and I see the fletching and it's just shaking. It's like, I'm like, I didn't understand what happened because it was in in the brush, right? Uh Stuck dead center on it. Yeah. I realized like at that point, I like moved my, of course he, he's gone. I take two steps and I, I, I stepped aside and I could see the white from that sapling. And it was it was maybe, you know, two inches across or whatever. And uh and I just dropped my bow. I, I didn't even <laughs> I dropped it. And Man. my father in law was with me. He's like he he watched this whole thing unfold and he's like, Let let's let's go have a beer. You should have named that deer RJ for Randy Johnson. <laughs> yeah. I mean he hits that, yeah, hits that bird. bird with the pitch. Hits a bird. He got poached. Now, he man, got poached that's like terrible. a week later. Yeah, he got shot off the road, and and his dad actually, I got pictures of his dad. And I got video. I had Hunter, I had her daughter, within forty yards in a field. She's shooting a one twenty five crossbow, so it wasn't heavy enough, or I would let her go. Cause she was ten years old, mm-hmm. right? His dad came down. He ended up going out one seventy six and an eighth, and uh, he had split G twos on both sides, just massive, his mass, his width, everything. He got poached too, because this guy. And I hunted him. I had him a dead buck for a whole season. I had no idea. He was dead. I didn't find out until rifle season. Yeah. He was dead. He got shot on, like, October, like, I'm going to say, like, the 14th or something like that. And I used to keep a book when I'd hear a gunshot of the direction and the time of day. And I find out. They're like, oh, that buck's dead. I was talking to a guy downtown. I'm like, I, I, and he introduced me. The guy killed it. And I said, oh, let me see pictures of it. And he sends me this picture. Of this, it shows me this picture of this rack lying on his garage floor, skull capped, mm-hmm. right, just cut off. And I'm like, well, "Where'd you kill it?" And he tells me, he tells me the day, and he tells me what it was. And then I go back, and I'm like, "Well, he says he killed it at like six o'clock." I'm like, "In this cornfield." And I'm like, "Well, I have pictures of it at 4:25, going the other way, that day, at, you know, and it's over two miles away." Yeah, and that buck is not traveling over two miles in, in early October, 
to go to this cornfield when I got it going down this oak ridge on the uh-huh. other way. And it's going right down the road. So I get my little black book out, and I'm like, oh, there it is. Gunshot. Mudlick Road, right where that buck was heading, you know, at like, right. it was like five five oh five or something like that. And, and I'm also looking at it going like, you killed a 176-inch buck with your bow. And you have no pictures in the field. Mm-hmm. You have one picture of this deer down. The only one, and you don't have one with the with the hide on. Well, you got to go back and you know check his socials. And like last year, he has a PA eight point yeah. nice picture in the cornfield <laughs> with his bow. Yeah. It's like, well, you took one with that deer. Yeah, yeah, but you don't take one with this you once in a lifetime buck. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's that's sour grapes. As you can tell, I'm still a little pissed about that. But um, yeah, yeah back happen. to yours. Back to yours. So so you started so so. You hunt opening day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, we uh, – we, the, re- the reason I ask that is because I actually do know guys who, if the pressure isn't right, if the wind isn't just right, mm-hmm. like, they might have a backup spot, but they really don't hunt. They're real, real, real particular. Doug's one of them, right? Real particular about when they go in. I actually have a guy that if the pressure is not over 30, he, he won't – unless it's November. Mm-hmm. In October, if the pressure is not over 30, yep. and, he, he ain't going out. Even and, yeah, there, there's a lot there to – to to go off of and i think you can definitely increase your chances of like picking the right days and not over pressure right. in the spot for this deer in particular where he was i mean yeah i had 500 pictures of him from august to the opening day but i also had 500 pictures of dudes <laughs> yeah so it's like all right man uh from the opening day i'm gonna put this mental clock in my head and the time's gonna start kick, clicking down right immediately like if i don't kill him opening day the chances of some dude shooting him up where he was going all the time right super accessible easy place high visibility nothing t- difficult about it right you can just go sit on a field with it ah, there you go thank you with an easy access <laughs> route up there and be where this deer was right so i checked the wind and i said i the way i think he's gonna come back into his bed i'm gonna be good on my win so now, um, this is on the night you got him no this is the opening saying, day okay opening day gotcha gotcha which is a wild story because yeah. i backdoor this dude so i would get him on this camera that i left in his bedroom coming back into his bed at like five thirty, six oh five. right i got to the base of my tree at four o'clock i backdoor him i went up a high wall it was terrible <laughs> just sweating my nuts off when i got up there <laughs> And then I'm doing a hanging hunt because I hadn't been in there for weeks. Like, right. I jumped that deer there, slapped a cell camera up and left and come back to the opening day. Yeah. Like, I just let the camera tell me what was going on. So I get up there. I'm at the base of my tree at 405, super tense, everything. You right. know, you, you know, you, a little pull strap buckle touches the, the yeah. quick stick and makes right. a ding and you're free. You know, like, that's yeah. it. He's gone. You yeah, know? right, right. But, uh. About 30 minutes after daylight, a small deer I call Little Goof. <laughs> he's got this, he's got this little three-point side, and then it, like the other side just hanging off his head. Right, and right. He's, I call him Little Goof. It's kind of funny, but he was like always within 10 minutes of Biggie. Right, right. Not that they were running together, but they were on the same program. Right. He comes, he comes uh, past my stand at 10 yards, and I got buck fever. I'm like, Biggie's going to be within 10 minutes behind him. I actually grabbed my bow turn, got set up, and was shaking. And he yeah. he never showed up. And that kind of started, like, I went right into his bedroom on the opening day. And then he kind of started to disappear on me, like, from from the opening day. Like, he was still, every other night, showing up at that apple tree where I found him. Yeah. Well, I had a, uh, I had a SIM card trail camera that I didn't check for a week after the opening day i went and pulled that card and for the first time all august september this dude took a different trail into his bed at 2 30 in the morning my cell cam missed him so i'm thinking he's coming back at five six o'clock i'm gonna get in there at four in his bed right and i'm gonna be there when he comes back right the literal opening day of bow season he avoids my cell cam, walks in front of a SIM card, but I, I didn't check it till like the 6th or 7th right. of October. Right. He went back to bed at 2.30. I jumped him on the opening morning out of his bed. Like when I got to the so tree, now you've jumped him twice. When I got to the out base of the my bed. tree at 4.05, like I'm in here two hours before he is, mm-hmm. he, he's, he's running, whatever. 
He was already in there. I jumped him twice. So I jumped him in September, and then I jumped him October 1st, the opening day, or whatever it was this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that was before light. He was in there. He was, he was in his it, bed before. I think he was in there at two forty-five, three o'clock. Wow. So, I had him on camera in the original spot until about the seventh of October. Mm-hmm. But after the after the opener, it was every other night. It wasn't every night like it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was coming in on the right side of the frame at the apple tree. Yeah. Which it was always the left side. So now I'm yeah. like, well, he's bedding somewhere else. And the direction he was coming from, there was guys all over it. So I'm yeah. in full panic mode. The whole week, yeah, the whole yeah, first yeah. week is like, some other dude's this gonna, is terrible, he's going to yeah. get killed. He disappeared after the 7th for eight days. Mm-hmm. I got a picture of him on the 13th, and that was the last one ever at that spot. So from what he did. And that was a nighttime picture? Yep, yeah, middle of the night. What yeah. he did from the 7th of October until the 13th of October, I don't know. All right. But wherever he was during that stretch, on the night of the 13th, for whatever reason, he came back to where he had summer, summered, checked that apple tree one more time, which gave me false hope. Right. So I said, oh, well, he's still here. Right. Well, another seven days after the 13th without him being on the camera, I'm like, the writing's on the wall, dude. You need to move. Right, right. So I'm going to say probably the 16th, 17th, 18th of October, somewhere in there. I wish I would have kept more dates. Um, I took six cell cams, and I went big stretch. Right, right. And I actually – I went to the to far end of the of the game lanes I was hunting, or, where I thought it right. was the best – the most likely place he went is on this far end. I went right. over there, and right. I started hunting scrape lines, running cameras. Mm. I'm going days without seeing him. I'm confident he's not dead. I felt like I would have heard about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, right. And – I had six cell cameras available, and the the big scouting weekend that I gave myself to kind of mm-hmm. reset, reassess. Let's get, let's try to find them. Let, right, let, you right. know, yeah. I was about to hang my six cell cam, and I was like, the other, the complete opposite side of the game lands you're on right now shares a lot of really similar topo features to where he summered. There's a ridge just like he was bed. Or there's a bench just like he's bedding on. Was bedding right, on. Right. There's a top just like he was feeding on. Right. And I'm over here in kind of a different, yeah, style terrain. Yeah. Like the yeah. whole ecosystem was different. Right, right. I'm like, you need to put one camera way over on the other side because if you just took the elevation and the topo lines and the yeah. features, yeah, it looks same thing. It looks the same thing. It's just right. like a. It, it was 1.2 miles away. Right. I put the sixth camera there. I ran five where I thought he was, and I put the sixth camera in a random spot that had similar topo features, and he showed up on on the 25th. It was just a miracle. I got off work on the 25th. I drove to the section of the game lanes that I had all my gear. I jumped out of my truck. I ran a one. I, I ran a 2.4 mile loop. It was 1.2 to my stand. Right. 1.2 back. Yeah. I ran to my stand and I'm praying that there's not some dude back here because he's going to see this asshole like rucking. I pull my set and on the way out, I pinball and pull five cameras. I did it in 40 minutes. Yeah. Sweating, (laughs) jump in the truck, fly over there. So this is like, he's on camera at like midnight on the 25th. So this is still the 25th. I get off of work. Right. I pull all my, my whole set. I make it to the new area. Mm Mm-hmm. And I get all five cameras out, and I'm out of there by 5:30. That was my plan. All right, right. But I had, I was so, I was so concerned about the timeline of this whole thing. It was like I can't waste a day. Yeah. Like if I have yeah. three hours after work right. to pull a, a a tree stand and five cell cameras to right. to get on this deer, like right. I can't waste that afternoon. Right. Like I have to do it, and I did it, and it sucked. And as soon as I got, so now I have six cameras and a mm-hmm. and a mobile stand available. Right. Where he, where he showed up on camera again on the twenty fifth. Yeah. As soon as I got all that over there, it was like every night, same deal, just like he did in the summer. Yeah. To that apple tree he was going to in the summer. He was doing that in the new spot. He stuck to his program, just new area. Hitting acorns, or do you know what he was hitting? I honestly don't know what he was eating. And there's there's some there's some grain fields, agricultural yeah. fields in the neighborhood, not necessarily right. close or convenient. Right. 
But, like, yeah, he could go there. I don't know. I think <laughs> – I think he was on acorns probably through mid-October. And if you noticed, we had a really good acorn crop, but they dried yeah. up real quick. Yeah. They were yeah. gone by like the 25th. Right. Because right. I couldn't find acorns. I could find oak trees, obviously. Right. But uh, it's just like I stopped seeing acorns on the ground like pretty early into October, like that you know, second or third week of October or whatever. So I don't know, man. Yeah. Browse and – Whatever acorns he was left on, I know he was eating a couple apples, but... So when did you start seeing them in daylight? So, in the timelines, like... So what was going on when I found him on the 25th is I started losing sleep and leaving work early and just doing (laughs) stuff like, you know, uh, pretty reckless things, you know. (laughs) Just like blowing off plans, the old lady's going to kill me. right. I've and, been there when you've blown off her plans before. She, she comes and, back around. And I thought, I thought, I was sitting in my tree like Friday the night before I killed him. And I was mm-hmm. trying to think how long it's been since I found him again. And I was yeah. like, it's been two weeks. I've been, it was like eight days. From, from like the 25th of October when, he, yeah. when I found him again, yeah. it had felt like I'd been hunting him for a month in a week. Right. Because I I just had so much time invested. Just and you're still seeing pictures of him every night, though. Every night. Every night. This okay. is when Doug really got involved. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm bouncing ideas off of Doug. I'm starting to get help. I cancel my Illinois trip. So right. it feels like a lifetime of things are happening <laughs> in like eight or nine days. It was all it right. was. But right, there was right. just so much time. So yeah. much time invested in that. But I want to say the first time he legitimately daylighted was the snowstorm we got on the 2nd of November. Yeah. yeah. It was Tuesday. Yeah. I left the stand, and last week I took a bunch of half days off of work. Right. I, uh, I left the stand at like 1030. I ran to the office to get some stuff done. I was actually in the middle of talking to a client on the phone, and uh, my cell phone camera goes off at 11, 18 a.m. in the snow, and he's, he's daylighting right in front of my tree stand like real quick. Like, like he's going somewhere right, right. with purpose. Right, right. And that was kind of the first time I'd seen that because all the videos I was getting of him before the second was just like, he was just like kind of a curious deer, never was in a hurry to get anywhere. Yeah. Sometimes I'd get like two videos back to back and like there's a 30 second delay. Right, right. So yeah. he's just like. He's kind of milling around. Milling around this, yeah. like this day, like he's going somewhere. And then I had a camera about 250 yards deeper hmm. and he showed up on that camera six minutes later. So, like, he yeah. covered 250 yards in six minutes. Right. Put his in nose the, in, in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day. Yeah. Put his nose in a scrape, and it was just, like, Charlie Mike, and it just, like, I'm not. Right. Like, he's not here to mess around. Like, something was going on the second. Right, right. That was Tuesday. So, Wednesday, Thursday, he's not there. So, now I'm starting to panic again. And you're hunting both those days. And I think. You're hunting both those days? Yes. You in the same, you hang in the same spot? No, no, no. I hunted probably four different areas. And, and, and one of the big pieces of this, and this is great, like if you want to like talk to a younger guy, give him some yeah. good advice or whoever, it's yeah, like yeah. Um, I started hunting Biggie last week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm-hmm. where I wanted him to be. And in hindsight, that's so wrong because yeah. – my camera was telling me where he's where he's, where he's coming into the right. like the the spot that I could hunt him in mm-hmm. because you're limited to yeah, sure. you know boundaries and if you're a private land guy you're limited to your piece All right uh where your camera's showing you where he is that's where you need to hunt that deer like yeah. Because I he's he's telling me where he the, the cell camera's telling me where he is all the time, and I'm looking 200 yards at a really great bench with a great point. Oh, and there's a pinch point yeah. on this bench, and man, that'd be we've a great all, place to we've kill. We've all done that. That'd I, be a great I, place to kill him. I, I've just as a quick aside, the, the family farm here. Yeah. Number one, they haven't killed a doe. It's a family rule. I completely disagree with it, but. Yeah. They haven't killed a doe in 40 years. Older guys, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, more doe, stuck. better, right? They're stuck. So <laughs> so what I found is, like, I used to go, because there's so much sign. And there's even buck sign back here, like, on the farm. Like, it's just loaded with buck, big rods, big scrapes. But there's so many deer back there. I, the buck don't like it. Yeah. They, they don't want to be around. They, at least that's what I've found here is, like, during the summer, when they're summering, and even until the rut hits, they want to be. They don't want to be 
having motion around them all the time, all these deer running all over the place, making all they want to be in a quiet spot. So where do I hunt them? Right here. Yeah. This this little this little corner. Everybody just sneaks by. They walk by. They're looking at the farms, look at these big woods. And now once the rut starts, they pass through here. They're they're now going to the does. There's a party over here, man. Like there's so many does over here, uh-huh. like you can't believe it. So of course they're gonna be hitting that. Uh-huh. But I also have pictures of does they'll lay in scrapes. Mm-hmm. We got so many does, they'll literally lay next to a scrape. Like, mm-hmm. guys, come on. Like I'm waiting here. Yeah. But um but yeah, but I I've done that too, is I'll go back here. Number one, I'll I'll even that I'm looking at sign though, but I, I know in my heart that's that's nighttime sign. That's them cruising through there at one o'clock in the morning. And then when the daylight comes back, like in early October, they're not in there. They're they're back up here. But I, I also will go into a piece of property and be like, man, this looks like a great spot. Mm-hmm. That, like you said, it's a pinch point. It's this and it's, it's that. It's not it's about that. what we want yeah. it to be. It's, yeah, yeah. You got to know, you got to, you got to listen to what your cameras are telling you. Cause I think and the what best, the sign's showing you. Yep. Yeah. And I think the best thing we have right now in 23 is bow hunters is these cell cameras. And if you're not on them, you need to get on them because. Yeah. Before you're not allowed to anymore. Cause that's going to. Maybe. Yeah, that's could, the thing. Could a lot of states right thing. now are doing that. You're not allowed to run them during the season. Yeah. You know, well, like you use them while you can because, man, they're deadly. It, it, it's, it's like setting up a drive, you know, like uh, you, <laughs> yeah. you have 10 guys and um, <laughs> they're all just watching, letting you know. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but but like uh, you have a 10th guy and you're like, oh, go stand on that gravel road because a bear could run across there. Like we've done this drive for 15 years. A bear has never ran across that yeah, road yeah, and yeah. we're sticking a guy there just because we right. think it could happen. Right, right, right. And that guy's never going to get the shot. Yeah. So it's yeah. like. I made that mistake, I think, Tuesday, Wednesday, but which is interesting. You just told me. I didn't know this. Or, or excuse me. Oh, so Tuesday, quick side note. I went to the office. I was going to go for four hours. I was going to work 10 to 2. <laughs> a little less irresponsible. He just showed up. Bit, yeah. He showed up at 11, 18 a.m., and I yeah. left. <laughs> like, I, I took <laughs> off, and I went straight to, uh, to, to the field where he daylighted because on camera – I would get him on the entrance camera, yeah, and then, and then I would get him at a camera further down, right. and he would do that every time. When he got to the second camera, he would either turn around and come right back and go right back in front of the entrance camera again, hmm. or he would keep going, and I wouldn't see him for a day. Right. So hmm. I was banking on – he just daylighted 1118 in front of the entrance camera. He hit the second camera. He's going to turn around. And it was anywhere from two mm-hmm. to six hours where he would come back. Right. Like he would go out and do something, and then two to six hours later, he would come right back in front of the same camera you first seen him on. Right, right. So I set up right there at like noon on Tuesday in the snow, and he never came back. So Wednesday, Thursday, when he ghosted me on camera is when you're saying that this, this, yeah. this girl had yeah. an encounter with him. Yeah. So that's a, that's a missing yeah. piece of the puzzle. I'm glad to hear that because yeah. he was on a – he must have found a doe Tuesday cruising in the snow. Yeah. Man was out with her a day or two. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, I'm hunting, I think, is a really good place I could kill him, but I actually have no proof that he's there. It's like a bench with a pinch point. Right. It's in the neighborhood. I'm sitting in the stand Friday night, and my cell phone camera goes off, and he's in the spot where he always is. Right. And I'm not there. And it was 6. 618. 618. Yep. And, uh. I rad. I was only 200 yards below him. I rattled and grunted and was just trying it. Doug's texting me. I told him, I was like, dude, he's right above me. And he's like, do some snort wheeze, you know? <laughs> right. It obviously gets dark, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I'm going to hunt Saturday morning until 1.30 Saturday mm-hmm. on this bench. Right. And then I'm pulling this stand. I'm putting it where he walks in front of that camera. And I'm going to have a terrible next 10 days because it's a boring spot to sit. I'm right. not going to see any deer. I'm going to be able to see about 15 yards total. But I'm going to commit for the next 10, 15 days to the end of the season to hunt this one spot because I refuse to be where I think he should be and right. have him daylight on that camera again. I'm not there. Like, just right. listen to the cameras, man. Yeah. So now, this wasn't the entrance camera, though, was this it? What? It was the entrance This is the, the entrance, entrance camera. camera. Okay. I'm like, okay. I'm going to sit on the entrance camera. So you had sat there before on Tuesday when in the snow. You sat there and then After he adjusted. had already gone through. Yeah, and then you adjusted again, yep. and then you decided, screw it. I'm I said, screw it. I'm, the next 10 days are going to be terrible. It's going to be boring, but I'm going to sit here because right. if he daylights here again and I'm off somewhere else, <laughs> I'm the biggest <laughs> asshole in the world. So I go up there. I set up. 
and it was like five or six miracles that happened where I was just amazing. Like there was a guy that had a stand halfway between me and where Biggie came into the field at, and he wasn't mm-hmm. there on a Saturday night on November 4th. Probably probably out to dinner with his wife and friends like I was. Dude, <laughs> Biggie walked six <laughs> yards, five, six yards from his stand like on a Saturday wow. at 6.04, and he wow. wasn't, the dude wasn't there. So, wow. so, yeah, Saturday night I set up. It starts getting to be about 5.45. What time did you get in there on Saturday? I so got you it. Pulled it, you pulled it and went right up. I got stand. out of my stand about 1.30. I went mm-hmm. down. I ran home real quick, grabbed a sandwich, because I only live five minutes from this spot. Right, right. And uh, I got in there 2 o'clock, 2.15. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I got to the entrance camera, there's no trees there. And I knew that going in. I was like, I'll figure it out. And there's like this little skinny oak tree. It's like super skinny for 18 feet. And then it splits and it's even skinnier on the two splits. Put the sticks on, moved the stand four times. Kept getting out of it, making adjustments, getting out of it, making adjustments. Finally got to where I have uh, an eight-yard shot to the entrance trail where the entrance camera is. And... uh, on my right, where this field is, I have nothing. But I don't need this because he has never in his once ever came into this field any other way than entrance camera first, next camera second. Right. Never has he ever gone into that field any other way. Right. Since the 25th. You know what right, I'm talking about? Right, like right, a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. So he daylighted twice in 10 days. Right. And out of those 10 days, he was on camera six or seven. Right. Total. They were all and on that camera. All on the entrance camera. And at 545, because the night before he daylighted at 618, at 545 I'm locked in. Big chase is going on below me. So I'm kind of really focused on that. And I can just see the other end of this field about 200 yards away, where mm-hmm. he usually ends up right. after the entrance camera. Right. And if he's not there for the first time ever, he's – uh, on the t- uh, 200 yards away on the total opposite side of the field for the first time ever. <laughs> I see this deer. I pull my binoculars up, and the first time I lay eyes on him in person, except for when I jumped him, yeah. is uh, his G2 is disappearing down the hill straight away from me, 220, 230 now, just disappears. Like I see him for half a second. And what time is With this? the glass, he's gone. Uh probably 5.55, yeah. f- you know, almost 6. Yeah, right, right. And I hang my glass up. I grab this old Primo's grunt tube I have. You know, it, things just start happening really quick. The bangers are probably the way to go. Mm-hmm. They're louder. You know, yeah. it's probably sure right. rattled. Right. But I let out the stupidest grunt you've ever heard in your life. Like you were <laughs> saying, you did this yeah. on your yeah. big buck story. yeah. And people give me crap about this on the socials, but I grunted at that deer. He was 215, 220. And this guy called me out on Facebook about it, and right. I, tra- I did the on X line distance. Yeah. yeah. It's 185 yards from me to where I seen him naked eye. By the right. time I got the glass on him, he was another 30, 40 yards disappearing. So right. that deer was every bit of 200 yards away. Right, right. I let out the biggest, stupidest grunt. By the time I got the grunt, I put the grunt tube back in my right vest pocket uh-huh. so I could have my bow in my hand and right. grunt if I needed to. Right, right. And I was fighting with my my uh, belt, right. my tie off. And right. I finally I get around. I get this grunt tube stuffed in there. I pull the glass up, and about five seconds go by. I'm just looking in that spot. I disappeared, and here's times come back, and he just he pops up and he's walking straight towards me. Just a miracle. Yeah. Two hundred something yards grunt. Yep. He comes out, stops quickly. I grunt it again, more of a a better grunt this time, you know, more of a realistic. <laughs> Less of a two-stroke. Yeah. <laughs> he licks his nose three times, shakes his tail, puts his head down, commits. Just, yeah. I start losing it. So I have no shooting lanes right. Everything's right. been about this entrance. I throw a bow rope around a limb. I get the bottom of it with the, with the slack of the bow rope. I tie a right. running bowline. I tie a running bowling knot to the Who limb. Who said all that Navy training wouldn't come in handy? Dude. I mean, here we are. We're running, we're running <laughs> knots in the tree with a buck Dude, on it. Dude, I start yeah. cranking that rope, yeah. double wrap around the trunk of the tree, and start catching the slack. I tie a half hitch, tie this limb back. Now I have a shooting lane. <laughs> Just the craziest. So 
So the deer, the deer hears the grunt. He actually comes to it. I tie a freaking limb back. The guy's right. not in his tree stand. All these right. things are just right. falling in place. So his tree stand was up along the field somewhere. From where Biggie started coming from the grunt, yeah. he walked right in front of that stand 10 yards. In the field still. Or it, it, like five yards in front of him. In the field. He's still in the field yeah. at the time. Okay, so this guy's hunting that field edge. If he was there, he would yeah. kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no way, like, if, even if he knew how big he was at five yards, it's kind of hard to. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it happens. But So the guy's not there. Biggie goes right past his stand. And now I have a shooting lane because I tied this limb back, and I'm, <laughs> I'm set up on it, and I'm ready to go. And, like, four or five minutes go by, and he never – because I can't see – the, like where he is coming across the field. I can see right, right. Hit the end that he was on and the end that I'm at. The right. middle section can't see. There's a thicket there. And he never shows up. And I'm grunting all these things in my head like, man, he, he's hung up like a turkey. I've seen this before. Right, sure. You grunt at a buck. He's looking for a buck. He's looking for a deer moving. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Yep. He, he, you know, you're 100 yards away. He'll come 40 and stand there, and he wants to see a deer, you know. And he yeah. doesn't see, he turns around and leaves. I'm thinking all this stuff in my head. I'm like, do I need to snort wheeze? Right, you know, and you get complacent by this time in the bow season of hearing squirrels and chipmunks in the leaves. You just yeah, quit right. paying attention right, to them. Right. It's this damn squirrels on my hard left, and then I start noticing because the way the way these squirrels move is like two jumps in the leaves real quick, and then they jump onto a, a tree, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like real right. sporadic, quick. Right, it's right, not right. consistent. Yeah, well, it's like it's just like a real consistent squirrel on my hard left. <laughs> so after like twenty seconds, I start actually. Like, like yeah, devoting yeah. some time to like looking that way. Yeah. And if he's not right there at 20 yards in this ridiculous thicket with that rack, I don't even know how he was moving in there. Yeah. So what he did was he got to the point where I couldn't see him in the field. And instead of staying in took the field, hard, took a hard he right. took a hard right, went into this thicket, pops out at 20 yards. I have no lane because I have the entrance lane and this new lane for the limb. Yeah. From the time I seen him, he's walking. I didn't have much time to like, I just went full draw, and he walks out in front of me with no shooting lanes and just naturally stops at what I think is about 30. And I'm full draw with my bow turned horizontal to him. Like, I don't even have my bow pointed in his direction because I'm looking for something. Mm. I point the bow in his direction. I go in a full squat, and there's a, there's a lane there when I'm in a full squat. Split the 20-40 pin, and I ripped this dude ripped them like so this wasn't the lane you created no nope, it's just a this miracle whole, lane that i found by doing a squat <laughs> like it was there i right. smoked his I, best shot i've ever put on a deer which is my favorite part about the whole story and i'm not bragging it's just like yeah, when you he's massive brag when That's you shoot when you shoot a, a big one that good yeah it's just like it's the best thing you could ever wish for yeah. is to put a good shot yeah. On the buck. That Bring him into frame him. while we're talking about him, by the way. So, yeah. But, yeah, I I, I, I ripped him, dude. Uh, just absolutely hammered him. He uh, – So, did you get heart? you get – was it double lung? What did you go? Double lunged him. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I shot, like, the, my sight picture was – that was a good shot. <laughs> right, right. I pretty much collapsed, holding on to a limb. <laughs> right. Like, just – start calling people right right before that he ran like 30 yards to where i couldn't see him and then i heard crashing on the right right and then i start losing it and yeah, yeah, yeah. calling people and text doug he's yeah. like are you kidding me i'm like no he's like how'd it look i'm telling him i'm yeah. calling ben he's in illinois i call my old yeah. lady she's in the kitchen screaming no way <laughs> it was awesome yeah but I get down, get to the arrow, like probably I, it probably took me fifteen minutes to like try to like slow myself sure. down, right. lower the the peg and the bow down. I get to my arrow, and the arrow doesn't look doesn't look great. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna look for first spot of blood. I'm not gonna go farther than ten yards. I go five steps, and there's great blood. So the arrow is like okay, but there's great blood. Yeah. I back out, give it two hours, long as two hours over. Right. Doug and some, another buddy, of mine Tyler, shows up. Maddie throws our baby jetty in the pack and we yeah, all roll yeah. out there together and yeah. uh we get up to that first spot of blood I found everybody's like yeah that's good we go 30 yards and lose blood I heard crashing right so I'm immediately 100 yards away on the right like checking right. all these trails leaving this field right all these big main trails like checking them all for a blood spot and uh, I didn't know at the time but Doug and Tyler 
were back at Last Blood with Maddie, and they were having the conversation, who wants to get them and get them out of here? Because we're, we're coming back tomorrow. This isn't what mm-hmm. we thought it was. So they're having that conversation. Tyler looks left, which is not the way that the deer went. And he goes, there's blood right there. Like, no. I'm like, where? And he's like, you know, I'm like kind of yelling from 80 yards away. I'm like, mm-hmm. where? I come back. And sure enough, dude, that deer ran away from me. I thought he went right because I heard the crashing, and they're looking at blood on the left side. Yeah. So maybe another deer running off or something was that. Yeah, I was. must have heard deer I didn't know that were yeah. there that, that, yeah. that took off. And Tyler's like, hey, Craig, I'm sorry. He's like, we got to come back tomorrow. Doug's looking. He's like, "There's a, a there was a tree, so the underbrush wasn't as thick under the mm-hmm. tree. F- five yards down in there. He goes, let's go to that little clearing where that tree is and see mm-hmm. if I'm pretty sure he's going to cross that. He goes, we'll find our blood. At least we're in the clearing tomorrow we can just have a good starting spot. Right. I took two steps, and he was he was halfway between us and that clearance lane right there. He went in maybe field. five feet inside the edge. Yeah. Like, he went maybe maybe 45 yards. Yeah. I mean, just I just ripped that. It was, it was yeah. crazy. It was just surreal, you know. And uh, everybody's blown away about his mass. Like, nobody – and a lot of these deer are like that, though. It's like the, the IR on these trail cameras, they don't – they don't get the wraparound view. You just see where that stuff pings off its tine at, and, like, right. sometimes they look spindly. But, like, the mass, 42 inches of mass, yeah, it was nuts, dude. Just the whole – toad. Just the, all the things that had to come in place. The guy wasn't there. He heard right. my grunt. Right. Everything is right. just right. nuts. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been cool. He, I scored him 167.78. Uh, two and seven eights off of what Ben said he was when he saw him in velvet. Well, no. Okay, that's the thing I was going to mention earlier is – I started telling people he was 167 inches. And the reason I picked 167 was most guys either pick a zero or a five. So he's 160 or he's 165 or he's 170 right, or he's right, 175. Right. Sure. I knew he was there. So you're saying this before you killed him. Yeah, I, him I said it for a month. I didn't want to say 170, and I didn't want to pick the five. So I said right. he's 167, and I got crap from everybody for that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, dude. He yeah. scored 167, <laughs> seven eights, just a miracle. But uh, Ben scored in Buckmasters 171, but yeah. but you pull the burrow, so like they pick up some right some mashes off the bases and. Uh, I'm gonna grab that thing. And put yeah. some hands on. If he uh, so the 60 that day thing. drying period started started Saturday. Right. If he breaks 160 <coughs> in 60 days, he'll be like the 72nd biggest typical whitetail uh, in PA history, which is which is kind of crazy because 162. If if he ends up at 162 after drying and stuff, yeah, to be the 72nd biggest Pennsylvania typical whitetail ever killed, I think that's with the bow. I don't think that's and with again the, state game lands. Yeah. Right. Yep. I mean, yeah. So, you know, and and Doug proves it every year. We won't mm-hmm. say where he hunts. I don't I, even know. I, I do. I do know. By do the way. you? Yeah. But he told me but, a name of but, like. But a, I just did it because uh, I know because it's just like I'm staying out of it. You know. You know what I mean? That right. kind of thing. Like I want to make sure I wasn't stepping on his toes. Well, the respects there. Yeah. But you yeah. need that. And like I was going to mention that earlier when we're talking about the girl that had an encounter with him. Like for her to be happy about it. Like you need that because yeah. the bow hunt community is small and it's getting smaller. And you should be able to collaborate with other guys and not sneak behind his back and go home. Oh, the, the fact that. the fact that you were going to bring, you know, that you're bringing Ben in and mm. and Doug in if he hadn't killed one to, to say, like, somebody's got to get this thing before he goes down with a rifle. I, yeah. I, that, that's awesome. Yep. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now now that you got this guy, that blade's awesome on that G2, by the way. That yeah. Thins out right there. Got a little. Yeah, I, that's wild. Mailed the tooth today. I think he's. I thought he was six. Now I'm thinking he's five. But um, either yeah. way, like for him to make it to five, yeah, on game lands for all of our especially, crazy rifle seasons, especially or, being that patternable and st- and going back to the same spot yeah. and being on a bench like mm-hmm. that bench has had to be pushed off how many times? Yeah, you, well, you know they've been I, hammering. I don't that know. So he was absolutely on a bench in this summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. After he left, I don't we know don't where know his bed was. was. I have some yeah. ideas. And I think it's going to be fun. It'll give me something to do this winter yeah. after the season. 
go yeah. walk some areas I thought he was and see if I can't find. And he didn't leave sun. I talked to a guy the other day that said he found some mega rubs up uh, where he was summered at, and there's a chance that was him. Yeah. But he never hit scrapes. He would put his nose in them and keep moving. Yeah. He didn't work scrapes. I never saw like a like a like a good sized rub that would be yeah. like you know you yeah, can't right. always judge off rubs, but when, when right. a big buck makes rubs, it's usually like something you look twice at. Yeah, sure. He just wasn't participating and leaving a bunch of signs. So. We, we got we got a rub right out back here. No joke. It's it's that big around. Yeah. And the one that's making it is the one Brock missed one. He missed his first one with a crossbow. Or I'm sorry, with a compound. So mm-hmm. he switched to a compound this year because he finally squared off and he can pull one back. Yeah. And it's it's a six point. Yeah. But it's literally an 18-inch wide <laughs> yeah. six point. It's just got nothing on it. It's got brown yeah. tines and one G2 on each side. And he missed it. It's up on the, on the corn thicket. But uh, he missed it like 28 yards, shot underneath it. And, you know, he's only shooting a certain amount of weight. You know, he mm-hmm. can pro- we could probably crank it up. But he's midseason now. I'm not going to change it. It's what yeah. he's been shooting. Six of the program. And, and he turns around and he goes, he goes, what happened? I was like, welcome to the club, Damn, buddy. Yeah. Welcome to the club. I said, it's going to oh, happen a lot more. It's devastating. But, uh, but it was a clean miss, which was great. Yeah. You know, we saw it, went under him, had mm-hmm. it on video, double-checked it, make sure it didn't graze him or anything. And uh, But, you know, yeah. we, we talked about, I think, before the, the first recording that we lost here. Yeah, but we were talking it might about, be on there. We'll see. But, yeah, but we'll one the, back in. one of the best things that ever happened, which is kind of weird, but – my hunting buddy and I, Ben, we didn't have, we didn't get any bad habits handed to us because we had to learn everything from the deer. Right. From right. literally the time we were 12. Like, dad wasn't taking us right. out. Right. Like, me and him were being the biggest idiots. Like, in, you know, little ladder stands, we'd just pop up in random places with, yep. like, blue jeans and a camo t-shirt on. Yep. And it, and, and. And you could still kill stuff like that. I yeah, mean, I mean, you can. You get, I, like, I killed. I killed a doe like that with yeah. a with a Bowtech Lady Hawk. I, I killed one of the best buck I ever killed. I I was in a Butler at um, oh, what was the name of it? Uh, the Twilight Zone, like as a, a bar, you know, in a Butler the night before. Yeah. And I woke up the next morning and I went straight. It's to the Twilight. smoking. <laughs> I was covered in smoke, you know, and I was literally in an eight foot high ladder stand made out of two by fours. It was just made out of eight uh-huh. foot two by fours. So my feet were only like seven feet, mm-hmm. and I had the wind in my favor. I had a I had a, a power line going through there, and a little buck came up, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to use him as some bait because I figured he might stick around even if I grunted with him 15 yards from me. And as soon as I hit that grunt call, again being real aggressive, you know, like I, I was doing like the like attending, like a runt, 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 like really getting. I left one long one and then a bunch, like I was trailing one right, mm-hmm. and. uh Three buck, three buck came. I mean, they just charged in from everywhere, and they actually started fighting. This is just a funny uh, little side story. This man, I was twenty, twenty years old, twenty one at the time. Well, I was twenty one because we'd been to bar, so I was twenty one or twenty two, and uh, I missed him with the first one. I was shooting fingers. I was shooting a compound yeah, with fingers dude. back in the day. This yeah. is way back with the right? with the brass uh, knock point. Yeah, it, yeah. You slide it up yeah, and, and then I, you, like you split you it back. My little finger wraps on, and letting it go. <laughs> And I was shooting 25 12s, East and 25 12s. They were like hot dogs, like this massive aluminum camo. Yeah. 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 They, they put camo. It was oh, like yeah. that old. Yeah. yeah, dude. And I shot. So it starts. So this buck I ended up shooting was a nine point. He, he was nice. He was, I mean, I was young. He was probably 125, 130. And uh, he's, he's, uh, he's fighting this other smaller eight point, and he's just bodying them. I mean, he was a three and a half year old. He was a two and a half. None of these were older, older buck. And while they're fighting, they kind of started just sparring. So I, I let one fly, and I go right underneath them. I'm like, oh shit, I messed that up. They just kept fighting. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, get another arrow. <laughs> right? And I'm only seven feet off the ground, right? I'm like right uh-huh. there. So I, I shoot the second time. And I'm like, man, that felt good, and it sounded good. They're still fighting. They're still fighting. That's wild. And he. And I'm and I so I grab another one and I turn around and he's just pouring. Oh wow. I hit him right behind right behind the shoulder. Yeah. And it zipped through him. Mm-hmm. And I was using those old Thunderhead, yep. you know, the old Thunderhead one twenty fives. Yep. Zipped right through him. And I I knocked the next one. I'm like, oh, I'll shoot him again, I guess. And I go to draw and he starts like his back legs start because he was dominating the fight, right? Yeah. And then and they were going at it hard mm-hmm. when I hit him the second time. 
well, I hit him the first time, but with my second shot. And he's just, I mean, it's just pouring like a faucet out of him mm-hmm. from the sides. And he never knew he's hit. And so he ends up, his back legs end up giving out first, and he rolls backwards, and the, the eight point's still locked in with him. And that other deer's probably like, man, I turned this around. He's like, that's exactly <laughs> what I was saying. I was like, you know, he went back. You're like, you know that big one? Yeah, yeah, I, was yeah, yeah. I laid him off. He's like, like he, I'm a fourth quarter guy, yeah. man. <laughs> Kenny Pickett. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible for the first three quarters and decent enough to get the job done sometimes yeah. in the fourth. But, uh, yeah, he, he rolled, and then that eight point was still, like, stabbing at him. And then he kind of stood back, and he's snorting at him and, you know, he was snort wheezing, I guess. I at the time I didn't know, and mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember back. Like was because he wasn't spooked, but he was making sound to me like a snort. So I assume looking back, I'm like, oh, now that I know what a snort wheeze is, that's probably what he was doing. But yeah, he's stabbing at him. Then I'm like trying to run him off, right? I'm like quit, quit stabbing my buck, you know, quit killing yeah. my buck. But uh, yeah, some of that wild stuff. Because like like you, I didn't have uh, my brother was into hunting, and my dad was not at all at all so my brother learned on his own and we we kind of covered this earlier in a in a different podcast but the first deer i ever killed with a bow i belly crawled on it in a grass field because i didn't know you weren't supposed to do that yeah well i, I did stuff that i didn't even like I, I saw this doe and i was like oh well okay i've seen movies yeah so i took my call about slide it out in front of me crawl yeah. out crawl out, and no range finders or anything back end so this little doe I draw on my knees and I stand up and I can only see, and she's facing me. I didn't know you're not supposed to. She's a little thing, thank goodness. And I I shoot and it actually goes up over the hill and like disappears. And I had no idea <laughs> if I hit it or not. Like I couldn't even see the arrow when it hit it. I could see like her neck and like half of her, the upper half of her chest. And the arrow like followed the hill up around, right? And I'm like, oh, all right. She ran off. I saw her running off. I walk in the woods and there she is potting against the tree. Yeah. Like no blood trail, nothing. We'd have gone in the, in the sternum and thankfully she was young. It was enough. It could go through and it actually wedged between her hands in the back. Yeah. So it went the whole length or obviously, wow. not live long. but again, it's one of those things that if you listen to the experts now and there, are, I'm not knocking the experts, right? But there are, there are a lot of things I did and you probably did the same thing when you were young and just learning that you're trying things out that you didn't know you're not supposed to do. And you're like, it actually works like climbing yeah. up in a crab apple tree and not even in a stand just sitting in the tree yeah i killed my first buck like that yeah. spike there's just so many different styles on the hunt these deer and, and i've said it a few times since saturday telling guys like i did I, it was an enjoyable season <clears throat> hunting him i think i've seen like 10 other deer yeah and it just wasn't enjoyable just like like that style of hunting like i'm going after a yeah. uh, and I've done deer specific hunts in Illinois and high on places like that, but you're like in and out. Right. Like right. when you hunt one deer for like your entire six week yep. season, cause he's behind your house. Yep. It started getting like not enjoyable. And like, I wasn't going to change and not, not hunt them. Yep. But, uh, or not hunt them, but, um, it just wasn't a, a fun style hunt. And like, yep. what I really like is like when you get a new property, yeah, yeah, and your yeah. buddy's like, hey, man, I talked to that old lady down there, and we can hunt. You go in there, and you see sign. You don't know what's there. Yeah. You set up. You see a pile of deer, and you get to hunt these nice ridges and the pinch points, all that right, stuff right, right. that we want to go yeah, hunt. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't get that with him. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff we did when we were younger or, like, the guys are still doing it just because they don't care. But like, there's guys that don't care about hunting big deer. They just want to go get yeah. a bug. I think that's awesome. Right. Like, that's an right. enjoyable style right. Right. to hunt. Like, yeah. You're just out there. Yep. What can I see? I'm going to hunt my, high traffic spots. My, you know? my niece killed one right here, literally 40, 50 yards off of uh, – we have a tree stand 40 yards off my back door right here, mm-hmm. right, because this is just that little spot between us and the road. She killed a real nice nine point. I mean, for her, it was – I mean, it was – I think it was like a 130, a little bit over 130. And the next year she came out, she shot like a 95-inch a yeah. point, shaking like a leaf. Mm-hmm. Just and and I love that I love and now she oh, keeps yeah. saying like I'm gonna be a little pickier this year and I'm like yeah until it walks out yeah until it walks out and then you see that little basket rack doesn't matter and she's just excited and I love that and I've told Brock the same thing like he's killed he's 14 he's killed nine buck including one out in Missouri mm-hmm. uh, he started when he was five he got his first yeah, one yeah that's when he was a five. good that's a good body count but um but it, you know he's like I'm gonna be picking his I, and when he was shaking. Shoot, because that six point, I'm also kind of looking at that going like, man, if he lives. Uh-huh. You know, my uh-huh. biggest worry with that six is somebody shooting him in rifle because he, he looks big. 
then they're going to shoot him and be like, he's not legal. Yeah. You know, and then, then he's wasted. But so part of me is like, hey, let him go. But I'm also like, dude, he was shaking like a leaf. That's what it's about. If you get excited, shoot mm-hmm. the thing. Like, if it gets you excited to do it, do it. Yeah. You know, so he's looking at it like, he, he told me, he said, my standards aren't going to be as high this year because i got a compound and I know I can't reach out like I was. And i got to draw. Like, you know, you'll hear me on that video when he's drawing. I'm like, the, the deer, he's standing there. He's like, should I draw? I'm like, do not even think about drawing right now. Like, he's not moving and there's no wind, which is super hard to hunt on those days, yeah, by the way. I hate that because yeah. I can see a squirrel moving 150 yards away. I'm like, these things are going to nail us. There's no way. It was that way drawn. Saturday night. That's probably what heard that grunt from so far because there was no wind. Yeah. Yeah. It's quiet. Yeah. And then once the deer starts moving, I'm like, draw, 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 draw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like right in his ear trying to get him to go. So, but, uh, so that, you know, that yeah. deer was actually shot. He had a broken spine and a huge cyst inside of his chest. Somebody shot him in that, uh, in that space above the spine. Oh, in yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no man's no land No idea. There. And uh, my buddy Tyler was helping me scan him out, and he's like, this deer has a broken back. Did you know that? I'm like, No. Like once, he had a fractured vertebra. Once we opened him up, dude, he had this huge cyst there. There was no broadhead or anything in there, but somebody shot this deer in the, either last year or two years ago. Yeah. So I don't know if a you bunch got of, pictures or video of that or anything. No, I, I, I don't think we did. Nope. Ah. But I don't know how many local guys will listen to this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. like somebody shot a big ten point last year or two years ago and didn't find it, and it yeah. was him, for sure. Yeah. It's interesting that that didn't mess his rack up. You know, ah, a lot yeah. of times they get that wound and then they. Yeah, look, I think Jack little goof. Up. I was talking about little goof earlier. I think he, I think somebody <laughs> thought he was a doe last we year. Got, we, him. <laughs> we got, we got one of those over here at, the, at our at our club. I'll show you that too. He's yeah, his one side is like an eight point rack, mm-hmm. and then the other side comes down. It comes like passes here and comes down and makes a loop and comes back up and it like points out this way. And I'm like, yeah, we, we call him the stroke deer. I figure he had a stroke. Like his Something. side of his mouth's like hanging down. Huh. It's not his mouth; it's his antler. But that's yeah, his, yeah, you yeah. Know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so. I mean, I think the I think the biggest takeaways for Biggie was um, listen to the cameras. Don't just hunt a deer because it looks like a good spot where he should be. Like if you have the 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 gear like I do and sale cameras and stuff, and they're telling you one thing, yeah. like don't you're not gonna I'm not gonna guess better than what a sale camera's telling me. Right. So right, so I I committed to hunting what the camera said, and I killed him. Yeah. You know, well, well, even outside of that, even just this the sign because i'm actually trying to get away from the cameras a little bit Mm because i want to make sure brock knows you came in with a real solid foundation and you're adding cameras to it yeah i don't want brock to be a camera guy because then and not know the other stuff yeah you got to know topo you got to know food Mm -hmm. source wind direction thermals all all that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff that hard you know a lot of a lot of the hunting media now is just kill shots Mm -hmm. or we went to this location and look at this buck we shot. And it's like, well, what do you do when you identify a buck like this in July? Mm-hmm. What do you not do when you identify a buck like this in July? And, and you were using cameras. Yeah. But, uh, and like you were saying, he would have been tough cause he wasn't leaving a lot of sign, but mm-hmm. that's kind of odd as well. Right. You know, I want to make sure Brock knows about like, yeah. this is how to hunt. Mm-hmm. This is how to go do it. Yeah. You know? Um, and kind of, kind of just like what we were talking about a minute ago, man, I think the best way, and I have a, I have two daughters and if, yeah. if I have, you know, if they want to get in a hunt that's great. But if I have a son, I think my game plan is going to be is like, yeah. I'm not going to teach him real detail specific things. Like I don't want to yeah. give him any bad habits. Cause what if dad's wrong? There's guys hey, out yeah. there that hunt yeah. just like dad did. And yeah. then you meet their dad and you're like, this guy don't know nothing. <laughs> and like his son right. has built his right. entire thing off right. of all these lessons. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know, like these these kids, they're gonna learn a lot. Like missing missing a deer, yeah. And like he's gonna start going out on his own here soon. He's gonna start doing oh, yeah. dumb things oh, because yeah. you're not there oh, to yeah. tell him what you know. Hey, man, oh, yeah. that's not and and, and that's a great chan- way. But he'll take chances and he'll learn from them. Oh yeah, right? that's just how to do it. Like, you know? don't put a kid in a redneck uh, blind on a right. on a beautiful food plot with the perfect right. wind and just start him right now. And every year right. he's gonna be successful because you have this perfect situation for him yeah. like man you just took so much away from him yeah just, like what's he gonna do if, if yeah. you lose that lease or right. or what's he right. gonna do right. if his buddies invite him on a yeah. public land hunt somewhere when he's in high school he's 18 or whatever yeah. at right out of high school he ain't gonna know what to do yeah he's gonna be like well man I- see with brock his first word i mean he was five so of course i wanted something on a plot 
But even with that, he's out there on the quad. He's dragging a chain. He's dragging a chain link fence behind him, like on the quad. I'm, I had to show him. I was real intentional about like, you can put in work that you'll benefit from later. I'm not doing that work by myself. I know you're five. You're only five, mm. but you have to put in work. You're going to seed this plot. You, I'll have a seed or two, but you're going to have a seed in your hand. You're going to turn it. You can help us put the fertilizer down. You can help me build the blind that we're hunting out of. And I'm going to tell you why we're putting in this spot because of the travel patterns and access and things like that and where that one was set up. Um, so I think you can do some of those things. But like you said, if dad goes out and does all that stuff and then you get in and the kid's just sitting on their phone or on their game pad – the whole time and you're like oh hey here comes a deer get ready and shoot it mm -hmm. like they didn't teach him a damn thing no doubt you know i have no problem with them shooting them over a food plot i actually prefer actually i take that back i don't like hunting over a food plot unless they're really young i like it when they're young because it's a it's a stopped target they're mm -hmm. feeding it's much more likely to make a better shot right and i want them to be successful but in general like myself i don't even hunt like you said well, you said that guy was on a field, but like on a, on a, on a, Brock knows about staging areas mm -hmm. and hunting access to fields because I, I've had too many times where I'm sitting on this beautiful food plot and I'm like, oh, this is great. And here comes this three and a half, four and a half year old buck and he's 70, 80 yards and it gets dark and I just ruined it because I got to get out and I'm right on this food plot and he's going to hear me or yeah. this doe who's in front of me. The one that's 10 yards from me, she's going to hear me, and he's not coming back. You're, after that, you're going to have all kinds of two-and-a-half-year-olds coming back. Mm -hmm. They'll come back all the time. They're stupid, mm -hmm. right? One-and-a-half, two-and-a-half-year-olds. But those big boys won't give you a second no, chance. one so, and a half year old so bust, the Brock, dumbest creature in the woods. Yeah. There's one over here. Every When we sit in this little thing right behind the house, I blow on a grunt call. He comes running out. He runs around the clearing. He goes back into the thicket. I'll blow it again. He comes running out. Now, what I'm hoping for is when one of the ones that Brock wants to shoot is nearby – I hit that grunt call a couple of times and that little idiot's running around. They'll be like, Hey, they'll come over to check him out. Right. I'm, he's like my little decoy. Yeah. I basically got him on a little rope. But even with that, like I was saying, I, I want, I want Brock to know hunt access routes, get places you can get in and out of undetected mm -hmm. and live to hunt another day. That's the thing I tell them all well, the time. Then, I said, I try the one thing I'm not, I'm not that guy. I'm not this, this dude that's bringing home stuff like this every year. But I can say living to hunt another day is a huge thing that I didn't yeah. used to do. Oh, yeah. I'd make aggressive moves, and if it didn't come out perfect, I was screwed because now i got to go find him again because he moved. Now, pressure you know? pressure will, will cause the most drastic changes more than anything yeah. else. It's your yeah. pressure. Yeah. So. But, but, yeah, I mean, them deer, like, they come from somewhere. They don't just appear yeah. in a food plot. Like, right, right. And, and I, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know exactly where his bed was after the move. I have a couple yeah. ideas. And I never got that far. Right. Like, I had to make a decision, like, okay, how much do I want to risk now that it's the 29th, 30, 31st yeah. of October? Do yeah. I want to go pushing he might come to, to where I think he might be? Right. Or should I just lay the pressure off and just go where I know he goes? Right. And he's eventually going to daylight here. Right, right. He did it at uh, 8.41 one night. It was the earliest he had ever come. I'm right. like, he's getting closer. 8.40 <laughs> yeah. is right, a right. lot earlier than midnight. Right, right. And then he did. So, yeah. I mean, it, it did end yeah. up happening. But Yeah. Well, we're going to have to – I mean, we're at an hour and hour and 15, hour and 23 if we, uh, if we can save uh, all the uh, – You know me, dude. I'll sit stuff. and talk yeah. forever. So. Yeah. Well, I do want to chat with you, too. Um, we can do it now or we can do it another time about uh, all the other stuff we've talked about. Yeah, well, you, you know? know what? I'm cutting up Biggie tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to process them. Yeah. And uh, I'm getting ready for my trip yeah. for Ohio, which I'm super stoked about. Yeah. The second cold front. It's the seventh right now. The second cold front of the, of the, of the season mm -hmm. is hitting the Midwest on the 9th. Right. Friday the 9th. Right. If you're in Illinois, maybe it's the day before, right. but in Ohio anyway. And here, here it'll be so the, it's the 10th. If you got a day, just in my opinion, and I'm not claiming to be a super expert, but if you got Saturday or Sunday this coming weekend yeah. and you have an Ohio spot, you need to get there. Yeah. So. Yeah. I wish well, yeah, I had an I'm Ohio gonna, spot. I I'm going to be a uh, spot. We've been looking for one, though. Yeah. Well, there's great public out there. Um, yeah. But I'm I've taking off tonight, that. too. I've heard that. Oh man, the, the so. great pub, great big public pieces, and yeah, there's guys there, but yeah, 
you know it's a it's a marathon finding good public places like yeah. the, like your first year is not gonna be great your second year is uh, yeah. but you stick you stick to the plan like i'm gonna hunt right. this place for the next three four five years then you're eventually gonna you'll right. figure it out and you'll be right. in, in a good deer well, but you're getting bumped too yeah yeah well i know you had stuff on the contracting end and all the all the military stuff we talked about down at the down at camp so we'll oh, yeah. cover that another time love to that, man that's I, be an hour that's i'm into a solid hour, i'm into so. business and yeah. You know, yeah all kinds of different stuff we're gonna you start know. throwing some barndos up man yeah Get well construction company throwing yeah. some yeah. barndos up yeah but, well let's yeah. do mine first <laughs> yeah 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 we'll do that so yeah have me back dude we talk absolutely. about whatever absolutely well thanks for coming brother yeah, well, yeah. uh again welcome or thank you sorry for hanging out in the cord thicket Mm -hmm. uh, presented by Realtree. Uh, get that buck one more time in there, man. Get that thing in there. Biggie. Thing in Everybody Biggie. hates the name. I don't care. Yeah, I love it. It just came to me. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all deer. Yeah. All right. Thanks again, brother. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Thanks. The Corn Thicket Podcast with Kyle and Howie, presented by Realtree.